Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here. Happy Friday. It's Bachelor Nation news. Caitlin Bristow, queen of Bachelor Nation, a star of Off the Vine podcast, and founder of Spade and Sparrows Wine, calls out Nick Vial, winner of uh, Winter Bachelor, <laughs> I don't know what, uh, Special Forces, and uh, owner of the Vile Files podcast, Empire. You love to see it in Bachelor Nation. Follow me on Instagram, at dneals. And also, don't forget our morning and afternoon podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour. I'm going to get into this story and kind of untangle all of this uh, and read some of the comments that I'm sure are people saying, Dave, you're so salty, blah, whatever. Uh, but first, I've got some new graphics to share with you. Um, there is a free membership option on our Patreon. So at patreon.com slash Dave Neal, you can just use your phone and turn the camera on and literally scan the camera right onto this and it'll pop up. Or also you can go to our mailing list, which is also for free for new ways to make sure you stay in touch with us uh, and all that jazz. Okay, let's get into it. So Caitlin Bristow shared... Um, this nice little jab at Nick Vial. We've been covering this all week. Uh, but first, the reason why she threw this jab is she went on her podcast and discussed her uh, lack of sex drive uh, in her relationship. At no point was it uh, dissing Jason Tartik. It was just saying, you know, by the end of that relationship, I didn't even feel like I was into men anymore. Now, if you have a sensitive ego, you could take that as in she wasn't into you. But of course, Jason's a, he's a catch. He's a good looking dude. Clearly, that's not the case. The reason for Caitlin's response is what Nick said here. Nothing asexual about this, which a lot of people say, Nick just speaks his mind. Yeah, I, I know that's called an asshole. And in like a corporate world that you don't do that and he's allowed to. And I'm like, hey, I'm a comic. I understand. It's it's a relatively funny joke on the surface, but Caitlin's response here is hilarious. Aloha to everyone except for people who make fun of my sexuality for likes. Having a libido expert on the podcast soon. DM the podcast page for questions. My response was, um, which looks like we might have had the most liked response. Ooh, uh, that comment of his pissed me off. You shouldn't be punished for opening up about your struggles. And this is exactly what happens. Like, Caitlin's an open book. She talks about her struggles. And because of that, sure, Jason Tartik, her ex, is it's, it's going to be, it's got to be hard for Caitlin to know that Jason's also going to monetize the breakup the way she's monetizing it. They both have a story to tell. That's just going to happen. That's, that's fair game for both of them. With that said, I don't think she's taken any like overt jabs at Jason. I think the best thing for Jason to do would be to probably just take the high road. Now, we know that yesterday he went on page six pretty sloshed, which I don't blame him. It was at the Super Bowl where he said hey, uh, regarding Nick's jab at Caitlin, oh, we'll just let the viewers decide or whatever. Well, I'll read a few comments here that people have left uh, regarding, I don't know, I guess some people think I'm salty, which I get, but I at least can provide receipts for that. So here's Caitlin showing tush and whatever tattoo that is, I'm not sure. Um, and um, there she is staying at the Andaz in Maui, which by the way, Andaz is a great hotel. It's part of the Hyatt chain, really good. Um, Kristen said she put herself out there, too bad. And I was like, yeah, right. She should just take shit from her peers, my bad. Um... Someone said, you love her, don't you? She's got a lot of issues that she has no problem letting people know, which is totally her pre prerogative. But when she starts saying she's asexual, quite frankly, is woke and very immature. What? The girl is lost, and I think she's be the first one to admit it, but people can say whatever they want both ways. She's not special. Okay. And someone said, and are you mad she's dating her friend's ex-boyfriend? What? The fact that she's dating Zach, am I mad about that? What 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 do I care who someone's dating? Um, someone said she didn't open up about being sexual. She just mentioned at times she felt asexual. They were discussing ups and downs of wanting to have sex, and she was being vulnerable. Yeah, that's that's a smart, high energy way to look at it. This she's being vulnerable. Feeling asexual at certain times is not woke or immature. It's a common thought many women have when they are experiencing prolonged periods of low libido, hence getting a libido expert on our podcast. If you haven't experienced that, good for you. Be grateful for your healthy hormones. Now, look, I'm not blaming Nick. His wife is early to mid-20s. Maybe her libido's rock solid. They're in different scenarios. Caitlin is in a different time period of her life. I'm not blaming him whatsoever. It's just there's collateral damage when you just say what you're thinking, like 
which is an asshole thing, is fine. But the collateral damage is like Caitlyn and Nick are, like I've said before, kind of like they have this sibling rivalry, right? Which is weird because they fucked. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like this sibling rivalry where they're always competing to see who gets the big interview. We know when Clayton Eckert and Susie Evans broke up, they gave the interview to her. We know that Nick gets incredibly big interviews. Um, uh, so anyway, it goes back and forth. And, you know, it's pretty interesting. Uh, some of the people's comments, oh, you just don't like Nick. You know, they kind of like uh, whatever. It's, it's, it's you know, it spurs this whole uh, thread of comments. And it's like, whatever. My... What I'm about to say isn't a sort of judgment on Nick as a person. It's his business model, right? His business model is to sort of just jab at people, and he and he kind of has that idea: no good, no news is, or there's no such thing as bad news. Kind of like his is his kind of take on it. But Caitlin's kind of like, hey, this is my fertility. I opened up about. So for you to tell Jason, oh, nothing asexual about this, you're missing the point. The point being that I have something I should be working on and whatever. So again, my my sort of uh, core critiques of Nick have been that he, A, wants to get into mental health, you know, be a therapist. And at the same time, he uh, blasts the UCAN Foundation because someone else is trying to do good with their platform. Again, I don't, I don't see Nick really doing good with his platform as far as raising money for charities like the UCAN and all that. So he bashes Nick Thompson. Okay. Bashes Blake Horseman. Kicks the guy when he's down. They have their ongoing beef. Basically, is mad at Nick, uh, at um, Blake Horseman for uh, exposing tweets, uh, exposing text messages that vindicate himself. Calls Blake an F-boy and all that jazz. Then... In order to win a fight with Katie Thurston, also blast tweets. So he's hypocritical there. And the fight with Katie Thurston was him just kind of like kicking another lead down. Kicked Rachel Recchia when she was down. It's just like you see the ongoing storyline. And when he launches his new podcast, what does he do? He, he advises them, hey, do whatever you can to get clicks, which is fine. But I do think at least in the smallest way possible there is a little bit of an ethical conundrum you have there because these are real humans. So did Nick need to take a jab at Caitlin Bristow on Jason's podcast, on Jason's Instagram? No. Is he okay doing it and going to get a bunch of likes and get rewarded for that? Sure. But when people think like, oh, Dave, you don't have it. You have no reason or this salt or this. I, I just think, I just think, um, he doesn't need anyone who has value to share on a podcast, entertainment value, informational value, whatever it is. You don't need to belittle others in the process. That's my thought. I'm not saying that from like some lifeguard tower or I'm better than. I just think it's funny. It's like, what's, what's the motive? So anyway, when, I, when people go, oh, Dave Salty, it's, well, yeah, when someone takes your name out of the conversation, it's from a scarcity mindset. I get out of my case and I get a text from a podcaster and um, he said, hey, I get out of my case and I get a text from a podcaster named Dave Neal featured in Time Magazine. And um, he said, hey, I will defend you on my platform because I feel it's the right thing to do, even if I will be sued for harassment. And it's okay that other content creators would rather not defend you until legally they're in the clear, even if they decide to delete my name from an interview. I'll still use the rage from my strong audience to promote my podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour, and also my Patreon for private membership opportunity, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And um, he said, hey, you did a good job today. And you represented yourself well. And I said, what? Do you, what? I go, how do you know? Because that whole time you thought you were alone when you only saw one set of footprints in the sand? Well, Clayton... That's when I carried you all the way to my award-winning podcast, Bachelor Rush Hour, and on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Neal. You know, when I made that reel, I made it. It took a little bit of time, but I didn't do that whole like Jesus carries you so there's only one set of footprints. And I was like, man, I was about to upload it. I was like, man, that line is so funny. And I redid it to add that because, hey, that's when you commit to the bit, right? But either way, look, it is what it is. I just, I see Nick's. I see Nick's ability to throw these quips as going back to like early 2000s blogs. That's what, that's what I see. 
you know, I see like, all right, no such thing as a bad story as long as we're getting clicks out of it. What's probably going to happen, and again, again, this is the same Nick who said the body wasn't even cold yet, referring to Gary Turner's late wife. He seems to have no problem saying things as long as he's rewarded for it by it getting into the media. Um, I guess the question will come, what, what sort of brazen attitude will he have where he says or does something that just crosses that line, you know? If I were, like, say, so, sort of an advisor, I'd be like, dude, just be careful, but, like, you don't get canceled because you're, like, one step away from saying something that's probably going to have a group be very upset, which, again, if you say what you mean and mean what you say, stand by it. I just don't see Nick having any conviction whatsoever to any of these things he's saying. Um, but, again, I, I actually... I actually struggle to want to judge him because I'm seeing it more as sort of a personality type than anything, which not to say that in a good way or a bad way, it just seems to me that it's kind of more or less, I don't even want to say a fault of who he is, but a product of like just the way his brain works. Jason Tartik replied, just went on my first walk of the day with the dogs. This, th more, uh, this is my thought of the day. If you catch yourself speaking poorly of someone else today, take a quick beat. You're speaking about someone else, yet it's very likely the reality of those words may actually be you speaking about yourself. So much of our judgment is based on internal projection and resentment. To speak ill of others is a dishonest way of praising ourselves. I don't know if he means that as in he's saying that about Caitlin. Unless there's something else that was said, I don't really understand that quote. It could just be like about internet trolls or whatever. But either way, the sort of Cold war between Caitlin and Nick and Caitlin and Jason is interesting. And again, some people might see it from the outside and say, Dave's just bitter to us. Look, you do the math. Look at how many alumni have beef with Nick. So many of them tolerate him because of his platform size, um, which it's like, I get that from a business uh, standpoint, but wouldn't it be nice just to hear what people really think? Again, not to hurt others, but just to be like, you know what? It'd be nice. It'd be nice for Caitlin just to be like, you know what, Nick? Fuck you for for like making a joke over something that's so serious about my private life. Fuck you for that. I would just like to see that. But again, maybe she's got more class than some people think. All right. We'll be back on Patreon right after this. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Peace.